In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Grace to you, and peace from God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. As we celebrate this day after Ash Wednesday, we lay ourselves in the hands of a merciful and forgiving God and ask for whatever we need forgiveness for. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Prompt our actions with your inspiration, we pray, O Lord, and further them with your constant help, that all we do may always begin from you and by you be brought to completion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and doom. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin on you today, loving him and walking in his ways, and keeping his commandments, statutes, and decrees, you will live and grow numerous and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to occupy. If, however, you turn away your hearts and will not listen, but are led astray and adore and serve other gods, I tell you now that you will certainly perish. You will not have a long life on the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and occupy. I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life then, that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice and holding fast to him. For that will mean life for you, a long life for you to live on the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed Blessed are are they they who hope hope in the the Lord. Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Repent, says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the disciples, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed on the third day, be raised. Then he said, If anyone wishes to come after me, he or she must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his or her life will lose it. But whoever loses his or her life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself or herself? The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Whoever wishes to save his or herself will lose it. But whoever loses his or her life for my sake will save it. What do we need to lose during Lent? I'm going to share a thought with you and I want you to know that I'm only pointing the finger at myself. You, you have to wrestle with this yourself. There's plenty to wrestle with if you want to. Addiction is a very hard word. It conjures up horrifying images of life-threatening dependence on some narcotic or hallucinogen that robs us of our ability to control our lives. But the fact is, almost... Everyone has some addiction. The things we cannot imagine living without. It may be eating for some. Shopping. Blaming. Being in control. We can be addicted to the latest, the newest, the hottest, the most fashionable. Our addiction may be our obsession with our computer or electronic toys our favorite band, our golf clubs. We're all addicted to habits, substances, or surroundings that comfort us, that provide us a refuge for us, that block out what scares or hurts us. At some point in our lives, however, we find ourselves alone in some kind of desert or wilderness, deprived of our addictions, We experience an emptiness like someone addicted to painkillers whose prescription just ran out. It's hard. It's awful. To become fully human, it's necessary to encounter the world without our own anesthesia. To find out what life is like with no comfort but God. I heard a definition of addiction. I leave it with you. Anything we use to fill the empty place inside us that belongs to God alone. The season of Lent calls us to leave our addictions and our pacifiers and our comfort food and toys behind in order to journey to the desert to be alone with God. It's a time to take a hard look at our own addictions, to regain control of our time and values so that we may become the man or woman God created us to be. As we embark the second day of Lent on our desert journey with Jesus, may we let go of our addictions and leave our obsessions behind in order to refill, refill our souls and spirits with the wisdom and grace of the God who constantly seeks us out and calls us back to Him. Anything we use to fill the empty places inside us that belongs to God alone.
take a few minutes now to, to pause and to pray together, to remember that we pray for the people here and everywhere in our church and in our world. We open our hearts to a powerful, powerful, loving God. For those who share faith in Jesus as the Messiah, we pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who proclaim to others Christ's good news, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who take up Christ's cross in pursuit of justice and peace, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who deny themselves to serve the oppressed and forgotten, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who share the Son of Man's suffering in sickness, grief, and pain, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For Alex J. Lynn, the intentions of Nino Palma, and for the intentions of Bob Ivers, we pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who hope to be raised with Christ on the third day, we pray, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, we lift our prayers to you, and we lift up especially our seventh and eighth graders at our San Carlos school. Many of them are really struggling not being able to be here, and they're coming tomorrow to be part of something. God, when they arrive here, may they just sense your presence in their lives every day, and may they know that they are not alone. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Regard with favor, O Lord, we pray the offerings we set upon the sacred altar, that bestowing on us your pardon, our offerings may give honor to your name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from unhealthy affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. With all the saints and angels, we praise you as without end we acclaim holy, holy, holy Lord God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, the Pope, and Danny, our bishop, Sylvester, our retired bishop, all the clergy and religious and awesome lay people, all God's people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and saints who have pleased you, Throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. Praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of the Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with every one of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Merciful God, be with us on the journey to Easter that we begin yesterday. Open our hearts that these days may be a time for healing and restoration that leads to a permanent change of heart, a transformation of our perspectives and attitudes. Help us to rediscover within ourselves your grace that we may transform our lives and our world from the ashes of division and selfishness to the peace and the hope of Easter. In Jesus we pray, amen. Yesterday at our Ash Wednesday Mass, Bishop Ryan um, talked about the schedule starting this weekend. So just to highlight that again, so. If somebody wasn't here, they could hear it. On, on Saturdays, we'll have a four o'clock mass here in the church. We can only hold 75 people, but come on aboard and enjoy that celebration at six o'clock in the church. We'll have our bilingual mass. On Sunday morning at 7.30, we'll be in the church here for mass. At nine o'clock, we'll be outside where we've been in that beautiful area over there. Uh, 10.30, we'll be offering communion at the front of the church. There's a change there. It has been 10, but now it becomes 10.30 for a half an hour. We'll have communion available, and at 12 noon, we'll have another Mass outside, trying to touch base with people in so many different places and so many different comfort levels. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God go with us today, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we go and continue this journey, and we walk this road not alone. As we face addictions and other things in our lives, we know that God can help us move them out of the way. Let us go in God's peace. <laughs>